We're a long way from the madness of March, but don't tell that to this sellout crowd. Two of the nation's top teams square off next. Demon Deacons meet rival ACC for the University of North Carolina. 14th ranked Wake Forest led by freshman sensation Chris Paul and the imposing Eric Williams will have to bring their best to Chapel Hill. New head coach Roy Williams has his fourth ranked heels cooking and his two sophomore standouts Sean May and Rashad McCants have lit up the Smith Center faithful. Two undefeated ACC rivals on a special Saturday edition of ACC Sunday Night Hoops next. A standing room only crowd at the Dean Smith Center on the campus of the University of North Carolina. And we welcome you to this special presentation of ACC Sunday Night Hoops presented by Staples. The 14th ranked Wake Forest Demon Deacon taking on the number four North Carolina Tar Heels. Both teams even better than that in the Sagarin ratings just released earlier today. North Carolina number two, Wake Forest number three. And a pleasant good afternoon to you. Season's greetings to you and yours. I'm Tom Brenneman. Great to have you with us. And what a treat we have today. Roy William is back at Carolina. Today, his first ACC game. We have three of the top four scorers in the Atlantic Coast Conference on display. And for many of you, your first look at Demon Deacons freshman phenom point guard Chris Paul. For the month of December, does it get much better than this? A pleasure, as always, to be joined by the former Duke All-American Mike Jaminski. And, G-Man, the point guard position, one of two terrific matchups to keep an eye on today. Matchups galore, Tom. And you look at it, and let's start with two of the best young point guards in the country leading their teams of the two highest scoring teams in the conference. Raymond Felton, third in the NCAA in assists. And you mentioned the freshman, Chris Paul, who leads the nation in steals at 4.2. Now, with Chris Paul, they want him to be more aggressive offensively. He can knock down the three. He's got the great ability to hit the lane and distribute to his teammates. And if that's not there, he can carry it all the way to the rim. They want to look for him to score some more. Now, if that matchup isn't good enough for you, let's look in at the paint area, where you've got two sophomore studs back Battling it out, Eric Williams and Sean May. Eric Williams, 22 points, 10 rebounds against SMU. His scoring is double from last year. And Sean May having a fabulous season. He's finally healthy. He's averaging a double-double, leading the ACC in rebounds at 11.3 per. He's got the great vision. He can kick the ball up the court. Great hands and positioning inside. And the last game out against Akron, 10 offensive rebounds. Uh, Tom, uh, at UNC hoping that they shoot the ball better so that there aren't that many offensive rebounding opportunities. Well, one footnote, an injury to tell you about. Venus Danilus, a sensational junior power forward for Wake Forest, will not play today. He is bothered with an injured ankle. Now, when we return, Dwayne Ballant will get together with Roy Williams. He left Kansas after 15 years to return to his alma mater in Chapel Hill. Hello, hello, hello. Everything sound all right? All right, good going down there. Nice job on a tease in the open. Graphics, everything looking good. Okay. Who won? Wow. All right, I'm getting off headset for the anthem here, Doctor.
Welcome back to Chapel Hill and a special Saturday edition of ACC Sunday Night Hoops presented by Staples. The people here at Chapel Hill are very pleased because back on April 14th, one of their favorite sons returned in the person of Roy Williams to lead their fortress back to the top. Back in the time machine, 1981-82 season, there he was, an assistant on what would be a national championship team. He returned dancing at Midnight Madness. I don't think Dean Smith ever would have done this. Roy has really captured the imagination of the people here, the t-shirts, paraphernalia, everything. They love Roy Williams and he's well aware of it. I'm not going to go out thinking, wow, this is my first ACC game. That's going to be so far away from my mind, I don't know if even me register. But I'm going to go out saying it's this team's first ACC game this year. And uh, uh, it's the chance for guys on our team to beat Wake Forest. Nobody on our team's ever beaten Wake Forest. And so it's uh, a little bit of a challenge. The T-shirt says it all. Got Roy. They are very proud. The favorite son has returned. Coming up, Tom Brenneman and Mike Jaminski will get ready for tip-off. You're watching a special Saturday edition of ACC Sunday Night Hoop presented by Staples. The Tar Heels and Deacons are ready. So low, uh, billboards, locator, Skip Prosser. Yeah, Skip Prosser. Referee. Yeah. Right. Carolina lineups. And then the Staples G-Man game plan. Correct if we have, we'll have the time, right? Maybe. All right. This special presentation of ACC Sunday Night Hoops is presented by Staples. That was easy. And brought to you in part by Kyocera, the new value frontier. By Acura, experience the performance today at your local Acura dealer. And by Microsoft, your potential, our passion. Welcome back to the Dean Snow Center on the campus of the University of North Carolina. Skip Prosser brings his defending regular season Lake Forest team and Deacons into Chapel Hill. What a job Prosser has done. This is his third year at the helm. And the starting lineup presented by UPS. Philippines and Aluso go with a three-guard set on Paul Downey and Gray. Joined up front by Williams and Jamal Levy. And Roy Williams. From Biltmore, North Carolina, just outside of Asheville, the 53-year-old, the winningest active coach in all of college basketball. And his starting lineup, the same five he's gone with the entire season. McCants, Williams, May in the middle, Felton and Melvin, Scott in the backcourt. Levy and Williams to tip it off. And this one underway, Wake Forest controls the tip. Chris Paul, the freshman point guard. But, you know, his, his first game up in Madison Square Garden against Memphis, so he's been in the big arena already, Tom. It'll be interesting to see how he reacts. He's a native North Carolinian. He knows what North Carolina basketball is all about. Now he's finally playing in the hall. Wake Forest last season, its first outright regular season conference championship in 41 years under Skip Prosser. Gray had it stripped away by McCants. Levy gets a loose ball, scramble, and McCants comes away with it. McCants all the way to the bucket, lost it, got it back. Contact underneath, but no call, and Felton will reload for the Tar Heels. Uh, Roy, Roy Williams has been working with McCants on his defense. He felt that was the area that he needed to improve on the most. 
Terrific feed, Williams to McCants in Carolina, the game's first bucket. And look for North Carolina to explore, explore Rashad McCants inside with the small lineup of Wake Forest and Dan Luce's absence. He should get opportunities in the paint. It's a big loss for Wake. Huge loss. All the way to the basket. It's the sophomore, Justin Gray. Boy, you love watching him play. He brings great fire and character to this game of DKT. And, and Tom, if there's a big shot to be taken at the end of the game, Justin Gray is the guy. Golden Scott off the mark, and here's Big Eric Williams ripping away a rebound. Crowd wanting to travel. Jamal Levy for three. Too strong. And saved by Downey. And Williams gets it. Gives it up to Paul to the basket, and the left hand will go. Uh, you see a little bit of the nerves right there. He didn't realize how wide open he was. Good bounce pass from Scott to the team. Both of these teams committed to running the ball up the floor. You're going to see a lot of transition basketball. Rashad McCants off to a quick start. Williams working on May. Good spin move into the middle for the big man. Game plan for Wake Forest in the half court to explore inside, get the ball to Eric Williams, have him put pressure on Sean May. Why the huge improvement for Eric Williams this year? Two words, Chris Paul. I'm serious. I mean, he creates so many opportunities for Eric Williams. It's been scary in the first six games. Plus, body fat down for Eric Williams. He's moving a lot better. Raymond Felton, the scoring numbers down, the assist numbers up with a healthy Sean May, and he knocks in the three. Gray tries to answer and go. With Felton all over, we talked about him taking big shots. Now normally, you know, that's a long three early in the shot clock, but uh, Justin Gray uh, not afraid to pull the trigger, 39%. At the other end, Carolina answers with a bucket and a two-point lead. Uh, and that's the last thing you want to do. Raymond Felton getting inside after a made bucket. Scott to the basket. This is something that Carolina didn't do against Akron. And, uh, we're going to talk about transition defense in a minute. But North Carolina is running the floor here early. Picked up his dribble, bounce pass in the levy, and the Cats very active defensively early on. Right, and you've got to be very strong with the basketball against North Carolina and do, do as little dribbling as possible. Good entry feed to me. Right Carolina, down. six point lead. Everything working for them in the half court and the open court. Well, you talked about transition basketball. And part of our Staples game plan, Wake Forest, how do they handle that transition defensively? Well, made hoops to, for the first part, but then you've just got to be committed to running back and then the limiting of the turnovers. Now, we've seen those, both of those have played a role here early. For North Carolina, they want to stay out of foul trouble, especially Sean May, who picked up by the foul that time. And also, their defense must make an impact. They were not happy with their defensive effort against Akron. It's been stellar in the first four minutes. Paul, the freshman out of Louisville, West Forsyth High School. He committed very early on to play at Lake Forest, and they're glad he did. Some people say that was my major all the way through, undecided. <laughs> <laughs> Felton to the basket, and the left hand kisses off the glass. Good start for Felton. They've been waiting for that breakout game from Raymond Felton. Wow, and he's stepping up and taking the challenge against Chris Paul. And as all you've heard about coming into this game was that matchup, and it seems to have ignited Raymond Felton. Another turnover for Wake. Well, Roy Williams not happy with the effort against Akron. He has to be very pleased with the first four minutes of this one. Uh, definitely the electricity in this building hit a much higher level in that game.
Last season at Chapel Hill, Josh Howard showed why he earned ACC Player of the Year honors, scoring a career-high 32. Then, a month later, Howard closed out his senior campaign with 24 against the Heels, including this slam. The Demon Deacon fans did not want to see him go, but now he's in the NBA starting for Dallas. Um, I miss y'all. I mean, I wish all y'all the best, and I just hope everyone does well, especially Wake Forest. Um, y'all hold it down, and I'll be back soon to see y'all. Pretty tough guy to lose, but Skip Prosser, his team has done very, very well to begin this year. No, no question. And, and you know, everybody has picked up, and Chris Paul has added so much uh, to the mix, but really Vitas Danilus' absence today is critical because he was the guy who was going to, to step up. He's got size inside, rebounding very well, but he has really had an injury plague preseason in the uh, first six games. Well, he's had a sore back. He had to have wisdom teeth removed. Had a knee injury and an ankle injury, keeps him on the weight bench today. Carolina, 15-8 lead. Wake works out of the zone. Yeah, a little change of defense right now. Give North Carolina a different look. Keep them from penetrating, and they settle for the jumper. Jackie Emanuel just off the bench and follows in the miss. Well, there's two parts of the equation, Tom. You've got to take them, make them miss a shot and then come up with the rebound. Emanuel is a very good offensive rebounding wing. Isolated on the chance, beat into the basket, got in traffic. Williams blocked it, and last touch by Wake Forest. Justin Gray says, "What are you talking about?" Said, "I had the shot blocked, and it went out of bounds." You know, I always felt, Tommy. You know, he didn't get the call. He was looking for the foul. That uh, you've got to play through that on the road. I, I you just, I went into a road game thinking you're not going to get any calls, and you just almost have to, to play for the contact. Of course, last season we had Wake Forest and their conference opener on the road at Duke. They were humiliated in Durham. That's when Justin Gray broke his jaw. But then they didn't lose again for two months in the conference. Sean May rattles in the jaw. Yeah, so that's, that's, not a, that's not a knockout punch. They went 13-15, and 15 in, uh, Wake Forest getting a timeout right now. Kyle Visser right now getting a talking to the freshman into the ball game to get a hand up on Sean May, who has got a he's got pretty good range for a big fella. You talked about a couple of areas. Wake Forest had to be good in to win on the road. One of them not turning the ball over. They've done it five times already. Now, and they haven't been good or strong with the basketball. A lot of stripping, putting the ball on the floor, and that's just too much to overcome. But this North Carolina team, if their offense gets fueled by breakout layups like that, the half court becomes much easier. Now, you talked about a little bit different kind of preparation for this Wake Forest team coming into this game at Chapel Hill today. Well, at, at the scout team, what you do is that to replicate the speed that Roy Williams likes to play at, when a made basket goes through, they don't even take the ball out of bounds they just grab it and run it up the floor and that's that's how fast the game seems and uh, right now Wake Forest having a little trouble getting used to that tempo Carolina on a 12-1 run over the last three minutes Ray pulls up from 17 and banks in there he called it sometimes that back door gets in the way at the right time but, uh, with Wake Forest with that small lineup trying to spread North Carolina out, get some cuts down the lane, and uh, so once in a while you get that fortuitous bounce on the road. Jawan Williams, the only Tar Heel that has played in the game not to have scored. Lost out of bounds, Carolina turns it over. And it's amazing, Tom. Here's a guy leading the conference in scoring, and nobody's talking about him. I mean, everybody kind of gets wrapped around the big three of McCants and May and, and Felton, and, and Jawan Williams is having a heck of a season. Williams averaging 19 points and nearly eight rebounds per game. Shot clock down 12. Gray will let it fly. And a rebound for May. Looking to push ahead to McCain. Three on two. 
And the chance lost control of the ball. And another turnover. Wake Forest can capitalize, but uh, pretty good transition defense by North Carolina. A semi-break that time, and I, I just thought the last possession, not a good shot selection by Wake Forest with that long three. Strickland along the baseline, Levy way up to get the offensive rebound. And now Downey, the southpaw, pulls the trigger, no good, and a whistle away from the ball. After the shot, McCants made contact with Downey. They're going to give him two shoot. They're going to give him two shots on the on the play, Tom. And uh, one thing you never want to do: foul the jump shooter. You know, another guy we talk about guys in the league who are quietly having good years. Jamal Levy has really filled in well for this team, averaging 12 and a half points, almost nine rebounds per. He can guard at four different pos uh, positions. Uh, really, a, a terrific find. And, and the way that Skip Foster found out about him was the uh, last year when Gray broke his jaw, Levy came in and then really filled in the spot. And a big round of applause you hear. One of three Tar Heels checking in. Is David Noel playing in his first game? The sophomore from nearby Durham. Had his right thumb surgically repaired in December. They didn't think he would play until mid-January. Today, his first game. Well, and that's a, that's a huge plus for this team, Tom, because now they can go seven deep. And I, and I honestly believe in the age of television timeouts, if you've got seven guys, you've got enough, because you're basically playing in four-minute increments. So, you know, they, they, North Carolina with only six, was, and especially the pace that they play, were really under a lot of pressure. Well, it's only after Poe that Noel would come back right around Christmas. <laughs> you, were just, you were just dying for him to play today, weren't you? Absolutely. <laughs> Justin Bolander, a teammate of Race on Terry in high school, has also come off to North Carolina. Shot clock down to 10. There's Noel. And an offensive foul. Well, one thing Roy Williams talked about, David Noel, in practice, he was in such a hurry to do something perfect, and that's a good example of it right there. Noel desperate to get in and make something happen on the offensive end of the floor. Raymond Felton just tracking that down, and then uh, Noel saw the lane there, but the rookie Visser getting in and taking the charge. Great first, creeping back in it. They were down 11, it's down to 7, and Paul going to the basket, gives it up for Downey, a three-point try, not there, but Visser, the rebound, will go to the line. Kyle Visser, the freshman from Grand Rapids, Michigan, averaging only four points and two rebounds per game, but a big one right there. Right, and early on, Wake Forest doing a pretty good job on the offensive glass, and uh, Visser, after not playing against SMU because of the injury to Danilus, and this is why, as a, as a bench player, you've got to be ready for every game because you never know when your opportunity is going to come in. Visser missed the free throw, got his own rebound. Scott comes away with it for Carolina, leading by five, closing in on 12 minutes to play here in the opening half from Chapel Hill, the 51st season of Atlantic Coast Conference basketball. Strickland whistled for the bump. Now let's keep an eye on the interior. Wake Forest, two freshman big people in there, Todd Henley and Kyle Visser. The coaching staff wanted to try to stay away from this as much as possible. Let's see how they react to their first ACC competition on the road. McCants back in, Williams back in, Bolander and Felton will leave for North Carolina. Taken away from behind by Down. Williams still not in the scoring column. Scott for three. Shooting it much better this season. The struggle the last couple of games. Uh, and that time, actually, Kyle Visser was the one who screened his own man, and that gave Melvin Scott the clean look. See if Chris Paul with this group out there becomes a little more aggressive, Tom. But Downey has certainly become more yeah. aggressive. Well, you know, as the junior out on the floor, you'd expect him to take a, a leadership role. And, and, you know, he has played point in the past for this team, but he's primarily a scorer. 
chance in this. Tried to tip, couldn't get it. And Visser, the seven-footer, pulls it down for late. Trailing by six. Strickland trying to get it to four. They'll go to the line. What has Wake Forest done all of a sudden that has slowed down an early start for Carolina? Well, they've gotten some baskets, they've hit some shots, and then gotten back defensively. And, of course, Raymond Felton out on the floor, it's a different team. And I don't think, you know, no disrespect to Melvin Scott, but he can't push the ball like Raymond Felton can. So, that's, you know, you've got speed out of the lineup. But I thought that, the, you know, Wake Forest has done a better job in the half court. They're not getting broken down off the dribble. And the two freshman big guys playing pretty well, especially Kyle Bissler. Quick on the sophomore out of East Flat Rock. Now 9 of 14 on the season at the line. May checks back in for Carolina. Noel will leave. Eric Williams is back for week. Nice minutes for Strickland. You've got to think that his presence is going to be important because with the small lineup they were worried about with Todd McCants' ability to post up inside. And uh, Strickland is a guy that can put on him and take that away. Manuel lays it into the left hand. Jackie Manuel seconds up it off the bench. We just we we'll just we praise them about their transition. We have like a made free throw. They get a, a great situation. That should never happen. Oh, too strong for Williams. And Carolina the other way. Jawad Williams had it stripped away and a foul on Justin Gray. Time and again in the first 10 minutes of this game, defense has fueled points for North Carolina. The quick hands inside, and Juwan Williams showing you the ability to get out as a big man and carry it all the way off the dribble. Williams, a junior out of St. Edwards High School in Cleveland, Ohio. He scored in double figures 15 consecutive games. The top two, in fact, double-digit scoring games on the same club. Rashad McCants, 19 straight games. Well, I actually did the game uh, up in Cleveland at Cleveland State, a homecoming for him. Rod Williams had a, a terrific uh, night that night, uh, 24 points, and uh, really played well. Williams hits one of two. Skip Prosser's team able to take the early blow. They trail by nine. For the Verizon Wireless Shootout, where this afternoon, Foul. Eric Williams foul. None. Is he yeah. scored? Yeah. 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 He is two points. Yeah, one basket. I think they mentioned us broadcasting the game, and your name was uh, to right. Well, our full weekend of ACC Sunday Night Hoops presented by Staples continues tomorrow. St. John's will take on number five, Georgia Tech. Coverage begins at 3 Eastern, noon Pacific, right here on Fox Sports Net. The ACC, the top-ranked conference in both the RPI and the Sagarin computer rankings. 
five ACC teams are undefeated among the 20 in Division I that are unbeaten. The strength of the league and the uh, interesting game tomorrow. I'm really perplexed about the St. John's, the firing of Mike Jarvis. There's got to be something more to that, Tom, because I, I, it just doesn't happen in college basketball that a guy gets let go this early in the season who's had three 20-win seasons there in the last four years. Inside the Williams, who has just one field goal, and that one off the backboard, and Williams a rebound for North Carolina. Fulton back in the game, and quickly the other way. This is an off to McCann's. Doug Williams back in the game. They're trying to get him involved. And he almost has slipped out of his hand. Yeah, he has had a struggle. He, he's just not looked fluid offensively early in this game. He had the one layup, but uh, struggled on the last possession and then just uh, couldn't gather himself right there, just right at the backboard, and all he had to do was lay it in. 25-16, North Carolina in front. Nine and a half to play here in the opening hand. Sometimes a guard can deliver the ball too early to a big man, but that wasn't the case that time. I thought he caught it in rhythm. And speaking of rhythm, John May inside. He, he has got beautiful post moves. And yes, he is a son of the former Indiana Player of the Year, Scott May. In fact, you had a chance to visit with him at length a couple of weeks ago. Sat up there and watched the practice with him and Phil Ford. He's reminiscing about the 76 Olympic team. I actually saw Scott over at the hotel today uh, before, he, uh, before he came over. He was pumped up about his first uh, ACC action. And Sean has only played in two ACC games uh, all of last year. He, you know, down at Florida State and then in the semifinals against Duke in the ACC tournament. So this is a little new to him. Well, it's definitely a different Carolina team when May is in the lineup. He started 17 games in the 13 and 4 when he started. Just got a great basketball IQ, a great sense of making the right play. And a quiet first half for Chris Paul. Kind of feeling his way. Talked about them wanting him to be more aggressive, but uh, so far he's trying to get his teammates involved. Williams little jump hook and nicely done. Much better, much better. And uh, it looks like he's a little more comfortable going to that right hand into the middle as opposed to spinning baseline and trying to power move. Williams trying to work down low. Instead, they get it to the pass. Williams will follow with his first pass. Good offensive rebound, good anticipation. He didn't give in to the fact that he thought that McCants would make that layup. Strickland from downtown, and he banks it in. I'm starting to say that's not his knee, but nothing wrong with that. He didn't read the scouting report, obviously, <laughs> Tom. The bank three, a big part of his arsenal. <laughs> well, he talked about Sean May. The sophomore out of Bloomington, Indiana. Classic move right here. Duck into the middle in the drop step. <laughs> Dr. Steinbeck. Jeez, please. Steiny, did you change your name this morning to Steinbeck? Uh, uh, yeah, I hope well, Every you, uh, piece of copy that we've had today looks like something written by Steinbeck. You know, just because it's a big car doesn't mean you have to fill it. And you wrote it, you probably wrote it when you got back to the room last Steiny, night, didn't you? Steiny, <laughs> Steiny, Steiny, Steiny. Steiny, you said that you will take the good, the bad, and the ugly. <laughs> Too bad you weren't in Dallas in 63. <laughs> Where were you, Steiny? And your bowling shoes. Well, that outfit you had on was in style in 63. I'll give you that. That's right. If you keep wearing it, it'll come back around, <laughs> Steiny. Just 
a lot of love on this broadcast team. I want to hear Amy again. <laughs> and I don't mean the Fear Prairie League version. Not a Steiny version. Tomorrow, a Fox NFL Sunday doubleheader beginning with America's number one pregame show. The Giants will battle the Cowboys as Dallas tries to keep their playoff hopes alive. Then later, it'll be the 49ers and the Eagles. Philadelphia looking for its 10th straight win. Coverage begins tomorrow, noon Eastern, 9 Pacific. The biggest stories are in the NFC, and the NFC is on Fox. My beloved Giants having a bad year, and their coach... Right in the crosshairs for Jim Fossil. Fired, yet still coaching the team. Gotta admire that. Play out the string. Absolutely. coming off the screen, got caught in the air, and able to dump it off the ball. He pitches it out to the South Paul County, and that's good. The Glen Lake Forest within three, and nearly a takeaway by Downey. He has been very good here in the last few minutes. Skip Prosser wanted a walk. Instead, it's a whistle against Wake. Yeah, that's a heads-up play. I mean, you kind of bait the other team and then make like you're just going down you know, four in transition and then turn around and get a hand out. He almost came up with a steal and made the big play. What a job Skip Prosser has done since leading Xavier. Coming to Wake three years ago. You know, here they are. They're you know, 6 and 0, high ranking. And nobody's talking about them in the league. The reigning champion in the regular season. They're kind of flying under the radar screen. I, you know, I'd, if I were Wake Forest, I'd have a little chip on my shoulder. You know, but in a way, I'm sure that's okay with Skip Prosser, although to his dismay, he's called for a foul there. And then on the inbounds play, the alley oop to Rashad McCants because everybody was complaining to the officials about the call. Yeah, you got to move on, get to the next play, and again, exploiting a shorter Justin Gray inside. McCants able to get the lob. There's no, nothing that uh, Gray could really do about it. Five-point game with six and a half to go here in the first half. Call for 40. Too strong, and a rebound to Jawad Williams. Now, Wake has been looking to try to get the ball into Eric Williams, but uh, North Carolina defending it well. Raymond Felton with a 12-footer. He has nine in the first half. He's only averaging nine per game. Now, uh, the people around this program were looking for him to have a breakout game, and uh, certainly here, nice move by the big fella inside, Eric Williams. Williams' his third basket, six points in the game. Wake dropping back into a little zone. Felton bounce pass into Williams, and he was forced out of bounds by Eric Williams. It's only the first on Williams who was in foul trouble, it seemed like, every game last season. Uh, no question, and uh, here you see Williams. He does a nice job of staying after it on the deflection. He's looked much more in rhythm in the last two or three attempts down in the low post. Nice left-handed move. And again, Lee asleep at the wheel when the official hands the ball to be put back into play. An easy bounce pass right underneath the basket. Great to have Dwayne Ballin back with us again this season. Dwayne, let's check in with you. Tom, you were discussing earlier Eric Williams. He's still 275, but what he's done, coaches told us, is reapportion his weight, and he's also smarter in the paint. He recognizes that he has to stay on the court for him to be successful, so he's a little stronger. The weight's the same, but they said if you lift that shirt up, it's a six-pack, just like our buddy G-Man. There is no debate about that one. <laughs> I got a six-pack for you. <laughs> I was going to say, you know what, my weight's redistributing too, but it's gravity that's doing it. <laughs> if only a lot of middle-aged men could figure out how to do what he's done. <laughs> Stand on your head for about three years. <laughs> Levy, the offensive rebound, and Jamal Levy, his first bucket. He averages 12 points and nine rebounds a game. Scott did a three earlier, Jawad Williams. Coming down with a rebound, and underneath the whistle for the foul is Justin Gray. Well, that's a tough whistle right there against Gray. He was just standing his position. 
Well, let's take a look at it. A look at his side. His third personal foul. A big pickup there. And uh, just trying to battle off. That was, well, what happened? He got caught by putting the left, the right arm up. And once you, you extend that arm into the body, the referee's natural tendency is to, you know, make that call. But sometimes they give the benefit of a doubt to a littler guy inside having a, you know, battle amongst the trees. Let's keep an eye on what happens here over the final 536 because Justin Gray is a big part of this Wake Forest team. And he's sitting down alongside Williams who got two fouls within the, what, 20 seconds. That's a lot of offense off the floor. Now I really think that Chris Paul has to start looking for his own shot in the last five minutes of the game. Williams now two or four from the line. Carolina in front by four. 530 to play here in the first half. Ball got bumped. And the foul will be on Raymond Felton. That'll be the sixth team foul against Carolina. So one away from the one and one. Now here's the look. I called for him to be more aggressive, and he puts his head down. Nice job of going to his left hand. Not a lot of players can do that, but Chris Paul able to hit the lane both ways. Good bounce pass into Levy and in traffic. Can't get the roll. Jackie Manuel, the rebound for Carolina. Mike mentioned it earlier, these are the two highest scoring teams in the Atlantic Coast Conference. Carolina averages 88, Wake at 87. But uh, on that pace right now. All the long pass ahead to down. He gave it up to Visser, who runs the floor well and lays it in. Well, he struggled. He had an ankle injury and then uh, the, the DNP against uh, SMU. But I think Skip Prosser gaining a measure of confidence in the freshman. Well, the game is so much easier if you're a big man who can run the floor. There are points just waiting out there for you. And Visser, nice look in from Downey. Good finish at the rim. Blake Forrest back to within two. First time that has been the story since it was 9-7 in the first three minutes. Right. you got to like the, the, this is a, the, the makeup of the champion. They suffered that early punch. They took the standing eight count, but then came back into this game. They're in very, uh, very good shape with five minutes to go. Justin Bolander. An invited walk on to Carolina. Mike, for the folks out there wondering, what exactly does that mean? <laughs> An invited wow. walk on. <laughs> he was on the Rayshon Terry uh, scholarship program, played with him, and uh, they said, hey, look, just come and play. There'll probably be a spot for you. We can't promise you anything. But most times than not, those kids wind up becoming scholarship players. There, there cannot be a guarantee, but you know, nudge, nudge, wink, wink, something usually happens. But he's actually given him some very quality minutes so far this season. He's been the first and second sub off the bench, the first big off the bench. Noel gave it to Manuel, and he got it back from Manuel, the first bucket of the year for David Noel. And, uh, you know, usually if, you, if you've been out and you get in, it's usually your second time on the floor where you feel better acclimated. Noel looking good on that drive. Look at Levy, high above the rim to get the rebound, and hacked on the arm by Manuel. Levy the kind of player, the more you watch Wake Forest play, the more you like him and realize how vitally important he is to this team. Well, I mentioned the fact, over eight rebounds a game, almost nine. And you look at him, he's 6'9", but 180 pounds, and you just don't think that he can battle inside, but very strong. And I talked to the coaches, he's desperately trying to put on weight, but some guys just you know, can't do it, whether it's metabolism or whatever. I mean, he, he probably is who he's going to be, in, uh, but just deceptively strong and very active. Well, he's uh, Demon Deacon's third leading scorer. Mike mentioned he is their leading rebounder. And Levy, along with Gray and Downey, the tri-captains for this Demon Deacon team. And I think his value defensively, I mean, when you can guard at four positions, a uh, coach just falls in love with somebody like that because you can just plug him in anything. Four-point game at the four-minute mark. Yes, sir. Well, so far, I mean, if you wake for us to sit in that zone and you want to make North Carolina prove themselves in the perimeter, and they've come up big from behind the arc, and the chance to kind of rekindling the fire. Strickland hacked by Rashad McCants. That'll be his second foul. 
Although they got Melvin Scott on the reach in. See, I, I like the attitude. I think this is going to be necessary for Wake Forest going on. You don't want to bail North Carolina out with jump shots. I think it plays right in their hands. We talked about Carolina wanting to stay out of foul trouble. If you force the action inside and make the referees make calls, that's going to be to their advantage. Plus, it slows the tempo of the game down a little bit. Strickland hits the first of two. Notice Wake Forest team, I mean, when you talk about their depth and the ability to wear down the opposition, they have six players averaging anywhere from eight points to 17 points per game. And everybody back from last year's regular season championship, with the exception, of course, of the ACC player of the year, Josh Allen. And the only team in the ACC without a scholarship senior. So they're still very young. I mean, you know, the four players, is, you know, the juniors are good. They've got some uh, sophomores and, of course, the freshman ball. And the big fellow and Vince are playing well. Played away by Scott. Nothing but yet. Seven in the first half for Melvin Scott. Well, you know what? And he was out last night with uh, Jared Haas, the assistant coach. He was the last guy to leave the floor working on his shooting. It's paid off for Melvin Scott. Levy throws it down on the feed from Paul at the other end. Three point deep. Three minutes to play in the first half. May calling for the ball, working on the freshman misser. And an offensive foul on May. His second. Visser has given him quality minutes here in the first half today with Dallas unable to go. I like him as a coach. You wait for guys to step up and you see who those players are. And Kyle Visser has done it in this game. The 51st season of Atlantic Coast Conference basketball and two of the titans in the conference colliding today. You're watching a special presentation of ACC Sunday Night Hoops presented by Staples. Free throw situation. Four of eight for uh, Carolina. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten. One, two, three. Seven of ten. Well, you got six of eleven. You got six. You got seven. Those free throws. I've got weak. I got Carolina, which you got, but I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, five, five. I've got ten attacks. You got eleven? I might have missed one. Coaches on the hot seat in the NFL are Jimmy Johnson tells you about the hottest head coaching prospects you've never heard of. Plus, our touchdown celebrations getting out of control. We'll talk to the most famous in NFL history that have done the celebrating in the end zone. The Ford F-150 Fox NFL Sunday pregame show tomorrow, noon Eastern, 9 Pacific. Here you're going to look at Scott May, the former player of the year out of Indiana. Last team to go undefeated in NCAA competition. And uh, we talked, one of the things we were talking about, that Olympic team, so you can't imagine the pressure that team was under coming off of 1972 when they lost to the Russians. It was unbelievable prepping for, for uh, that Olympic. And, of course, that 76 team coached by Dean Smith, yep. former legendary head coach here at North Carolina, the all-time winning coach in college basketball history. Downey missing on the three. 
The feed by McCants a little too far out in front of Williams. So I just think, Tom, you can get a better shot than that three out of a timeout. I mean, it was early in the shot clock, a contested three, and, you know, you're, you're back in this game, but then, and, you know, you're the junior and you feel like you've got to take the responsibility, but I think you can get that shot at any time during the clock. He's turned it over seven times. Wake Forest has taken much better care of the basketball here in the last ten minutes. Five turnovers, I think, in the first five minutes, and only two since that time. Two minutes to play here in the first half. Levy working on Noel. Couple of athletes getting together there. Strickland to the basket. Contact. This is a foul. Lays it in. One point game. And Visser was six off the bench for the Demon Deacon. Right, and if there's no call in that situation, then it's just a golden offensive rebounding opportunity. There's just no bodies in there to get in the way. And I like what Wake has done, spreading the offense out and getting the uh, chances at the rim. Look at the left. High into the air for the follow. Just brings them a lot of energy off the bench. And, uh, you know, it's, all it takes sometimes is that one layup to get you back into the ball game. And he got that fast break uh, basket, and now he feels a little bit more in rhythm. Brighton defending Paul. In a very quiet half for Paul. Only one point he came from the free throw line. And down he deflated. Offensive pass. Uh, Gerard Williams is saying, finally, you know, I, got, I thought I had it on the last one, and they rewarded me this time for stepping in. You know, this is one, Teron Downey, you've got to recognize what's there, maybe pull up a little earlier for that floater. His momentum carried him into Williams, which got him to charge. One minute to play here at the Smith Center. And the first half has advertised. McKean short from 15. Forced it up there, got it to go, and he'll head to the line with a chance to tie it up. Well, you can't play better defense than Felton did right there, and Paul found a way to get it in the bucket. Well, actually, it was Melvin Scott who was matched up, and I think that's why he tried to break him down in the spin move using the body. Nice strength inside. Well, I don't know if he makes that move against Raymond Felton, but uh, beautiful job by Chris Paul to get a little momentum going into halftime. Well, thank you, partner. I beg your pardon. It was indeed Mr. Scott. He got the foul, and we are tied at 45. First time we've been tied since it was seven apiece. Noel to the right. And an offensive foul. Got himself in the air for the second time this one for the charge. You know, if you're going to do that, if you commit to that, you've got to commit to the shot. And uh, I think uh, Noel had second thoughts a little bit too late. Plus, Trent Strickland, a nice job coming over. Plus, he had Kyle Visser bearing down. Noel immediately to the North Carolina bench with two fouls. And Byron Sanders, a sophomore out of both court, Mississippi, has checked in for the first time. Lake will hold it for a final shot and a chance to take the lead at the intermission. Great one to the glass. And gets the roll and Wade leads for the first time in the game with six seconds left to play in a half. Roy Williams going to take that timeout. You're not going to be able to carry with you into the second half. But Tom, how about uh, the guys stepping up with Dan, Dan Lewis, with Visser, and uh, Trent Strickland? Well, for what's coming up at halftime, let's check in with Dwayne Ballard. Tom will have scores from around the ACC, plus a, a look at the surprise team in the country, Georgia Tech. That's the Kiosera Halftime Show coming up. Well, we'll look forward to that with Dwayne Ballard. We talked about Georgia Tech. There are five unbeaten teams in the Atlantic Coast Conference, and the one team no one is talking about, Mike, you've seen them in person, Florida State. Yeah, very much improved. Uh, Leonard Hamilton uh, has a great recruiting class uh, down there. Alexander Johnson, the young freshman, Von Wafer. Um, plus, Tom, you, you look at it, they start four seniors and a junior, one of the few teams in the country that can do that. And, uh, of course, the, the, the former, former coach down at Florida State, Steve Robinson, he was a longtime assistant with Roy Williams. After his release last year, went and joined Roy at Kansas and came with him here to Chapel Hill. Felton racing the other way. He'll take it coast to coast. Fade away, and we go to intermission time. 
Raymond Felton averaging only nine per game this season. The ACC's preseason player of the year, 11 first half points. Let's send it courtside to Dwayne Ballard. Coach Williams, a frenetic first half. Your impressions of it? Well, both teams like to go up and down the court. Both teams are playing hard defensively. We've got to do a much better job on the backboards. It's a problem for us. They surprise you at all in the first half with the way they came back from the double-digit deficit? I don't ever watch the score. They don't surprise me. They're very good basketball team. Thanks, Coach Tom. All right, Dwayne, thank you very much. Felton to tie it. Right, and you talked about it. Raymond Felton became a little more aggressive offensively in this game, taking the challenge with Chris Paul. Well, when we come back, it'll be our Keo Sarah halftime report with Dwayne Ballin and a look at the rambling wreck of Georgia Tech. Okay, so I don't have to mention Keo Sarah again off the top. Okay. Yeah. No, that's that's fine. That's fine. Yeah, that's fine. Is that what you want? That's fine. Georgia Tech's number six, right? This special presentation of ACC Sunday Night Hoops is brought to you by Kyocera, the new value frontier, by Pioneer Plasma Displays, taking high-definition television to a whole new level, by PlayStation 2. Live in your world, play in ours. Well, let's now join Dwayne Ballin, standing by for the Kyocera Halftime Show. Thank you, Tom. We are tied 47-47 here at Chapel Hill. We've got one heck of a game going on. Tom and Mike were talking about it earlier in the first half. Georgia Tech is surprising everyone. Sandra Golden has more on the Yellow Jackets. Say hello to B.J. Elder. The Georgia Tech guard coach Paul Hewitt once called college basketball's biggest secret. And say goodbye to that title, because this is the biggest ex-secret in the NCAA. After storming out to an 8-0 start, upending number one UConn, and catapulting into the top 10 for the first time in more than a decade, there is nothing secret about this Georgia Tech basketball team. We wanted to know we, New York would play hard. We knew we had a big chance to make a name for ourselves out there. And everyone on the team played real hard, and we've been rewarded for it. The question is, where did they come from? Last season, the Jackets struggled through a lackluster season that saw them finish a game above 500 and post a 7-9 record in the ACC. 
Their best big man and best player, Chris Bosh, earned ACC Rookie of the Year honors, then departed for the NBA. Their second best big man and the 2002 ACC Rookie of the Year, Ed Nelson, transferred to UConn. The Jackets were picked to finish seventh in the preseason ACC pool. And now this? Yeah, it might be a surprise to some, but I, I don't think for anybody you know, who's been in practice with us every day, uh, it's much of a surprise because these guys have been working very, very hard. And you know, we realized early in practice that we had a chance to be a very good basketball team. I can tell you we'd be at this point this soon, but we know that there's a lot of, pot a lot of potential here. Yeah, we knew coming the season there wasn't much expected for us. But like, like I said, everyone in that locker room had good confidence in our team. We knew it was going to be a good team. It doesn't matter going out there and showing it. Mission accomplished on that. After the Jackets beat the number one Huskies, UConn coach Jim Calhoun said Georgia Tech outplayed, out-hustled, and outworked us. After the Jackets beat Bobby Knight's Texas Tech team to capture the preseason NIT tournament title, Knight lavished praise on the team, saying, it seems to me they have developed a determination to be good. So is that all it takes? Determination? Not quite. This team is also loaded with experience and it shows. The Jackets are outscoring opponents by more than 20 points a game, four players are averaging in double figures, and Georgia Tech plays a ferocious in-your-face defense that is tops in the ACC. Uh, I think it definitely just starts with defense. I mean, we got our defensive pressure up that usually gets our transition offense going. That's what we fl um, flourish and score most of our baskets. So if we come out and play hard defense, I mean, I, I don't think any team can really hang with us. At the beginning of the year, opponents may have scoffed at such a statement, but the secret's out. And you can bet nobody's scoffing now. What a job Paul Hewitt has done. One opposing coach told me recently that is a very complete team, and they are scary. Still to come on the Kiyosara Halftime Show, the ACC scoreboard. We're tied 47-47 at Chapel Hill. Florida State is leading Chicago State, I take it. Right, sure, okay. Okay, so you want me to go quickly? Okay, so don't even mention the score, just come. Right, right. Okay. Right. Okay, and Tom and Mike with uh, highlights coming up. <laughs> okay. I know that. I could use it. Welcome back to Chapel Hill. Let's check in with the ACC scoreboard. Last night, Virginia, which remains unbeaten, beats Loyola Marymount 76-68. It's Duke dominating Texas earlier today up in New York. South Carolina State loses to Clemson. South Carolina beats North Carolina State in a close one. Chicago, Florida State tied at the half, 28-28. And tomorrow, Dan Bonner and Tim Brando will have an ACC Sunday Night Hoops edition of St. John's and number five, Georgia Tech. We're tied 47-47 at Chapel Hill. Tom Bruno and Mike Jaminski coming up next.
right, Doctor, what do we got going on? Yeah, I thought I was right on that. That eight off the bench for Strickland. This was wrong. I knew I had that thing. Yeah. talk about um, both teams probably really happy with offensively what they're doing but uh, yeah 64 and 55 so 55 on the road and good three-point shoot yep. 44 One of the great venues in all of college basketball, the Dean Smith Center on the campus of the University of North Carolina. Welcome back to the Kiyosara Halftime Show. Tom Brenneman alongside Mike Jeminski. And, well, as advertised, two of the top ten teams in the country, and we're tied at 47 at the break. And maybe no surprise we touched on the fact that two, the two highest-scoring teams in the ACC living up to that on pace, both for 90 points here. So I think both coaches happy offensively. I mean, you see Wake Forest shoot 55% on the road. That's a great number. Uh, UNC coming off their lowest shooting night against Akron. Rebounds with 65% here. Rebounds dead even. And the transition points. Carolina got most of those 17 in the first few minutes of the first half. Wake a much better job over the final 10 minutes. Second half coming up next. He's got a good body. You're right. It's good so body. Looks like he's got a little confidence to yeah. him, too, you know, not intimidated by if they, if they got to a point where they could lock up him and Williams on the floor. Okay. Everything sounds great. Thank you very much. Three offensive. Yep. Leading rebounder in the game. Roy over there. He looks like he's worn out. First half of his first game. Okay, comment. I don't look at the score. And how do you measure yourself with other golfers? By height? <laughs> oh, I think he's score. The special presentation of ACC Sunday Night Hoops is presented by Staples. That was easy. And brought to you in part by Nissan and your local Nissan dealers. And by T-Mobile. Get more minutes, more features, more service. Get locked at 47 here in the conference 
opener for both teams. Some terrific basketball in the first 20 minutes. Well, you know, you touched on it, Tom. But Carolina got off to the quick start. Rashad McCants able to get off early 4-10 shooting for him. And then uh, Raymond Felton comes down, knocks down the three. Sean May able to get work done inside. But then Wake Forest sniffing defensively a little bit. Their junior, Teron Downey, coming out, knocking down some shots, leading them back offensively, gave them a little confidence. And then some help off the bench from Jamal Levy. Nice game for him. And... Uh, you look at, uh, I really think a key component, you see the leading scorers right there. How about Trent Strickland and, uh, and Kyle Visser off the bench with 14 points combined. So we're set to go here in the second half. Carolina with the basketball. Both these teams undefeated. Wake Forest, the defending regular season Atlantic Coast Conference champion, and Carolina trying to rebound from back-to-back -back very difficult seasons. And of course, it all started with the naming of Roy Williams as their head coach, leaving Kansas after leading them to the national championship game a season ago. Early miss by McCants and Downey the rebound for Wake Forest. Very nice job that time, Eric Williams, defensively changing things up on uh, Sean May, keeping the ball out of his hands in the post. And immediately go to Williams and a nice baby hook from about seven feet away. And Williams has his fourth basket. Left alone is Williams to tie. Injured as he falls to the floor, and Gray misses a three. Yeah, I think he just banged his knee on the floor. Nothing structural that time. He had a nice bruise tomorrow. But he has been very active. You see right there, falling hard on the floor. But uh, three offensive rebounds in the first half. He's been on the glass, and that is, uh, Roy Williams said, a concern going into halftime when you have a team come into your building and shoot 55% and get eight offensive rebounds, uh, that's a lot to overcome. That's the thing about you know this team and that's why we have not had him uh, the home opener against Old Dominion didn't score in the first half and then had a big second half. So he, he knows that the points are out there for him in this offense. There are going to be a lot of possessions in each half. Wow, but then Eric Williams, and the deep fella can't get the roll. Tough shot though, that little flip shot about a foot in front of the rim. You either have to go up and dunk that or keep coming across and use the backboard. Isn't that what you'd rather see a guy William size do? Just go ahead and dunk it. Well that and that in doing that, that puts the ultimate pressure on May. And then you make the you bring the referees into it and then, uh, they have to make a decision. But uh, you know, sometimes you can bail a guy out by going up softly. Well, he's able to tap the rebound to turn on down. And numbers the other way. Paul pulls up. And Williams tips it in. Yeah, nice job there coming back. Had a point guard in front of him. Felton trying to box him out, but there's no way that's going to happen. And he just put, pushed Felton right underneath the basket. That's like me boxing you out. Uh, yeah, uh, let's try that sometime. Felton with the penetration, picks up the dribble. And Williams into the lane, much more aggressive here in the second half, but an offensive foul on Jawad Williams. That'll be his second. Let's check in with Dwayne Ballard. Tom, I spoke to Skip Prosser just a few moments ago when he came out, and I asked him about the game being tied. He said, remember, Carolina was tied with George Mason early this season and ended up winning 115-81 after that tie at half. And he told me this morning at the shoot-around, and he reminded me of this, look, it's not going to be Clemens against Martinez out here. The ball's going to go out of the park. There will be some scoring. So he's not surprised at anything that's happening so far. Tom, I knew you liked the baseball analogy. Yeah, that's but I, I don't know anymore. why he's talking about Clemens and Pedro Martinez. There were runs being scored all over the place in that LCS. Jimmy Schilling and Johnson any day of the week. <laughs> what a real league. Absolutely. 
Skipper, I know better. He grew up in a National League city, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I got to tell you, though, a nice three. Justin Gray, he's got the three fouls. But, the, you know, the thing, if you're a coach on the road and you make it a 20-minute game, uh, that always works to your advantage. So coming in tie, especially after the start that Wake Forest has, Skip Frost is very happy with that. They get two points, even a four-point lead. Bounce pass into Eric Williams, who has six in the second half. Well, you can just see the difference in him physically and how he moves out on the floor, Tom. Get, get rid of that body fat down under 10% and uh, really made a huge difference. They call him for the ball, working on Williams, picks up his dribble, tough shot, and got the roll. That's just, you know, that's a lot of poise right there by May. Look at Paul at the other end, the freshman. You have two one-man fast breaks in this game, Chris Paul and Raymond Felton. And check Paul will be on Downey, and that's his third. Well, here's the look, and that's just poor defense by North Carolina. You have to identify the man with the live dribble, especially in transition. Nobody stepped up to stop Paul, especially the bigs in the back. You've got to get turned around and see where that man is. Now Downey will leave. After putting home 10 first-half points, he now has three fouls. And Strickland, who came off the bench to chip in eight points in the first half, replaces him. can't. Down the three, and it's a one-point game. All right, it's interesting. Watch how little used the three-point shot is by North Carolina. Wow. Way downtown for Gray. And then Williams threw it away. Bolton ran into Levy. No call. Possession arrow will give it to Wake Forest. Boy, is this an ACC opener or what? It's only December, brother. <laughs> We've got three and a half months of ACC Sunday Night Hoops. Three baskets in the first half, three already here in the second. But he's a man now. Look at the big fella here. First dick. He fills that out. Look at it. <laughs> that looks like little Sean May. <laughs> Tiny, it's like Groundhog Day. <laughs> <laughs> Doctor. Wake Forest with a one point lead over North Carolina, and they fashioned it on the second half on the back of Eric Williams doing work inside. Had a little jump hook into the middle. Then on the offensive glass, a concern of Roy Williams. He gets the tip and then running it out on the break and the finish at the rim. Tom Brennan, three baskets in the first half. He's already got three baskets in the first four minutes of the second half. And uh, stepping up, that's a big load offensively for Wake Forest. It always amazes me. Probably not you so much, Mike, because you've been around the game and played it so well for so long. But the improvement of some of these players from their freshman year to their sophomore year, Williams a prime example of that. See, I, I think that is the, that's the jump. That, that's the most improvement you're going to make in college. And unless for some reason your playing time doesn't come. Because you go through your freshman year and you find out what 
college basketball is all about. You make adjustments over the summertime, you get bigger and you get stronger. And just that, that confidence you get from that year is, is, is a huge importance. Ball misses a three, Carolina the other way, and now Felton will pull it back out. After that first 10 minutes, uh, Wake Forest has done a much better job of keeping North Carolina out of transition, getting back, making them work in the half court. It's a battle we talked about at the beginning of the game. May Williams, it's been a good one. Sean May short on the jumper, and Eric Williams with a rebound. Okay. A one-point lead. Anytime you can keep him out of the middle of the floor, if you're going to set up for that baseline jump shot, that's, uh, it's a positive. That's not the shot that Skip Foster was looking for. It's been a good game so far for Strickland. But pulled the trigger a little earlier, and here comes Visser, who along with Strickland, a big reason why Wake was able to take that punch that Mike alluded to early, early in this game, and then come back to tie it at the half. See, and I think, you know, for Strickland, he comes in out of five points. You have a big first half, all of a sudden his confidence swells, and he thinks, all right, maybe I can make this shot. You know, it's probably one that he wouldn't have taken before this game. Jackie Manuel nearly turned it over. Felton trying to get Carolina the lead, rims out, Levy the rebound, and he nearly threw it away. Paul able to run it down and then traveling on Strickland. Good hustle by Felton getting back the other way. Well, that was, I tell you what, that was unbelievable quickness by Paul. I didn't think there was any way that was coming right at us that he could run this down and get it in. But uh, Felton making the play. Each team has turned it over 10 times, closing in on 14 minutes to play here in the conference opener. In the first ACC game as the head coach at North Carolina for Roy Williams. Tough miss there by May and out of bounds to Wake. Roy Williams, of course, a 10-year assistant under Dean Smith here in the late 70s through the late 80s. The number one active coach as far as winning percentage is concerned. 418 and 101. If you pencil it in, you're going to win 8 out of 10 games. Man, that's pretty impressive. That is an impressive ah! person, I, I thought I wrote it down wrong. <laughs> well, looking for contact. Gave it up to McCants, who somehow got it in. Talk about the strength of Rashad McCants, able to come in under duress. I don't know that he ever really got control of that ball, but Felton, you know, I talked about one man fast break, the strength to hold off Visser, yeah, he had it slapped out of his hands and just able to get it up to the rim. He knew the foul was coming, so he knew he was going to get at least two shots. I believe they got Justin Gray for that foul, and if it is on Gray, that's his fourth foul. And they had Downey immediately set to check in, but McCants missed the free throw. They may have gotten Paul were being told for that foul, and it is Paul, so Gray still in the game with three. And then Jawad Williams picks up his second on a reach in. And that's, you know, you get frustrated as a coach, especially with your big players. A reach-in foul 30 feet from the basket on a guy that's not going toward the basket. You know, there's no need to give up that foul. Chris Paul will leave in favor of the junior Toronto Downey. Carolina leading by one, 13-20 to play at the Smith Center. That will be a three-pointer, or is it a two? Tip in that time. Paul Levy, and uh, he made the he made the swing pass, and then dove to the front of the rim. Fifth lead change in the game with four in his second hand. May working on Bisser. Gray nearly stripped it out of his hands, and Bisser whistled for the foul. Time. Sean May gets bailed out a little bit. I think he got stuck a little too deep on the baseline really to do anything about it. Second off, this is for a team foul for Wake Forest. I think Felton thought he was throwing that ball to Sean May. May let it go by, and Williams caught it underneath. Now, it's a, that's a, a play they work in their offense. Uh, instead of coming on the cross screen, you duck behind it and throw right over the top. Well-conceived play. 
by North Carolina. That had a funny look to it, didn't it? <laughs> And that was a preset play as well. Yes. I think the crowd's into it now. The pants high above the rim. The definition of our Bank of America higher standards. Why? Well, how about Raymond Felton? What a perfectly executed pass in Rashad McCants. You love a guy who will commit to go up after the lob. 16 for Rashad McCants, and they're back in it in Chapel Hill. Ray wanted to get out, expand the floor, open up the middle, and shoot Visser out of the way. Nearly tied up, and then a push. Against Rashad McCain. That was the offense that really worked so well for Wake Forest when they were able to spread North Carolina out and get some uh, passing lanes. Visser was kind of camped out down low and they wanted him to move out on the floor. And this is now, and this is where Wake does a good job of, of having some points. You know, it's, a, it's only a two-point game, but the crowd and the frenzy and the noise makes it seem like it's a little bigger lead, and you have to keep that in mind. Ants having a big game for the Tar Heels, so good at the bench. Carolina in front by two. Eight minutes have gone by here in the second half. Great trapped underneath somehow. Came underneath the basket, threw it up there, and comes up empty. Todd Henley has checked in for Bissett, and he's defending Williams. And Jawad the fadeaway. Out there, rebound to Jackie Manuel. And he comes up short. Carolina ball. The high flying Rashad McCants off the feed from Felton has brought this crowd to life in Chapel Hill. Standings. Standings? <laughs> Listen to the And doctor. then the dinosaurs walked into the pit and they turned into oil. <laughs> Why would dinosaurs get that close to L.A.? We're going to L.A. shortly. <laughs> Pauly Pavilion today, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The doctor. Yes, indeed. Will ever, Lonnie Dale will be at both. Will it ever be on Sunday night again? <laughs> Our 
full weekend of ACC Sunday Night Hoops presented by Staples continues tomorrow. St. John's will go to Atlanta to take on the Ramblin' Wreck, ranked number five in the country. Coverage begins 3 Eastern noon Pacific right here on Fox Sports Net. Take a look at the early numbers in the Atlantic Coast Conference, and they are mighty impressive numbers. Five unbeaten teams. One of Florida State's, they're one of their best starts, and uh, Georgia Tech ain't rambling, and they ain't a wreck early in the year. They have been very impressive. They've wrecked the opposition. Carolina in front by two, Mandel all the way to the back. You know what, Roy Williams has changed his game. Right? He, was, he took 72 threes last year, Tom, and he said, look, you're not a three-point shooter. You can't take that shot. Manuel coming in, shooting 76% because he's attacked the basket. Only has taken one three this year. Now the freshman point guard, Chris Paul, right into the fire. We haven't even turned into the new year yet. This is a, a big part of the learning curve, how he handles this game in this situation. Manuel, left hand laying. He has eight for Carolina. And Skip Foster says, hold on a minute. Well, you see, Skip Foster's upset because that shot by Downey was the first pass to the fast break. There was no defensive transition. This is the way Mike Jeminski used to run the floor. <laughs> Stumbling, bumbling, lays it in. comes from what I learned from him. Uh, we do have little things that we do differently. I do some things that uh, he would not do. And then uh, whether it's dancing at late night or, or not scrambling quite as much or not going to the four corners as much or something else, but still my basic foundation. Yeah. by six, Roy Williams, now the head coach at North Carolina. He learned under one of the game's all-time greats. Everything I do, the foundation, comes from what I learned from him. Uh, we do have little things that we do differently. I do some things that uh, he would not do. I mean, uh, whether it's dancing at late night or, or not scrambling quite as much or not going to the four corners as much or something else, but still my basic foundation philosophy comes from Coach Smith. And I'm not ashamed to say that. I'm very proud to say that. As he should be, Dean Smith, of course, the winningest coach in NCAA history. 879 wins, two NCAA championships, 11 Final Fours, 13 ACC tournament championships, an Olympic gold medal, a Hall of Fame. A few of those at my expense, and uh, you know, I, I like that about Roy Williams. It's like learning physics from Einstein. You know, why would you not pay attention to him? And, uh, not afraid to say that uh, Coach Smith is his mentor. And he said, you know, Coach Smith is an innovator, and uh, I'm a copier. Uh, if you're going to copy somebody, not a, not a guy, bad guy to, to look after. First pass there by Paul. And he got away with one. Gray comes up with a loose ball and lays it in. There's a break for Wake Forest. Huge break. I mean, that was a big possession and a good timeout by Skip Rosser. It could be a four-point swing right there, but uh, Wake Forest able to scramble and get it in the hoop. Well, it's got long on the three-point attempt and Paul the other way. Sigging and sacked into the basket. And off the backboard, Manuel. The rebound for Carolina, but a good game for Jackie Manuel. 
Good entry pass to Ann. You just put so much pressure as a post defender if you reach, Tom, and that's what happened. Eric Williams got caught behind, committed, tried to go underneath to Sean May, and if you don't make that play, it's an automatic two points. And he just got in a position where, you know, if anything, you try to go over the top and then make that play, and that way you don't give up the middle of the floor. Made the traditional three-point play. He'll get a breather. Gerard Williams, along with Rashad McCants, check in for North Carolina. Felton will also get a break. We watched him yesterday. Sean May looked like he was having a little problem with his back after practice, but uh, looks to be in uh, fine shape here today. Now 1-3-1 one, one for Carolina. Now with May out of the game, uh, a little bit smaller, so you want to keep Wake Forest on the perimeter, hope they can shoot a jump shot. Pretty good ball movement there, and Paul knocks down a big three. I heard that it's tight to say, but it uh, doesn't play like a freshman, does he? No, he does not, and they say he's an even better kid than he is a basketball player. That's all I believe. Williams a follow, not there. And then tipped ahead, two on one. Gray down, he back to Gray. Oh. Emmanuel, what a play by Jackie Manning. He puts the fist up to come out of the game, but uh, he had been faked up in the air and the quick hands able to get all ball. We watch Justin Gray will get it back, a nice pump fake. And on the way down, Justin Gray exposes enough of the basketball to give Jackie Manuel a play, and he gets a well-deserved hand as he comes out. Manuel eight points off the Carolina bench, only averages five per game. But Noel reaches over the top of Williams. David Noel has his third foul. Well, that's a great recognition by Wake Forest. There's nobody physically who can guard Eric Williams with Sean May out of the game, and Noel really put in a bind behind the big foul. You almost couldn't see him back there. And again, they go right back to Williams. Well, this time, Carolina able to defend better, and they take it away. I think there's too many hands in there, a bit of a forced pass. Trying to take advantage of Gerard Williams in the lower post against Teron Downey. Now Levy coming over to help out. And a jump ball. Possession arrow will give it to North Carolina. Why not talk about all the time? I just don't like that rule, this possession arrow. I'm, I'm in complete agreement with you. Now, how many times does it happen where you have to throw up a jump ball? I mean, that's good defense yeah, right there. Yeah, and, and, uh, and, and it doesn't get rewarded. Right. You know, and now again, it, it comes back around to you, but uh, I, I would reiterate that I, I would think the jump ball would occur. You know, you, you can get in there and toss it up. I'd like to see that come back. Hands working on the smaller gray, and nowhere close to making that shot. And I think you bail gray out by taking the jump shot there and not using your size. Gray. Rebound 11, sticks it back in, a two-point game. David Noel, a mistake that time on the weak side. Glass, Levy anticipating the shot. Felton had it blocked, and then last touch by Felton. Defended beautifully by Chris Paul. And that gets a Wake Forest bench up to Great Paul. Carolina leads by two. Stiney, what are you using, a sundial down there? <laughs> Lonnie, help. Help, Lonnie. <laughs> Do you get, Lonnie, get the, are you up for the uh, the Hustle Award, the Rudy Martsky Hustle Award? I think they need to build a graphic down in Atlanta, your travels over the last four days. Absolutely. Traversing the country to bring you fine basketball. Well, except for the NBA. 
that multi-award winning performance last night by the Seattle Supersonics. 25% they shot in the first half. What, 20? For Seattle. What's Wake's field goal percentage right now, you know? Well, coming up right after our game, an early season showdown between two of college basketball's best, Michigan State. They played everybody so far this year, and today they go to Pauley Pavilion to battle UCLA. Coverage of Pac-10 basketball presented by Kiyosera begins right after our game right here on Fox Sports Net. You see the Kiyosera second chance points graphic Wake Forest 19 and they're shooting 49 percent so that's a that's a, a big number right there uh, Chapel Hill UNC still at 54 percent for the game so both teams really playing very very well offensively well if you're just joining us the top two scoring teams early on the early part of the season in the Atlantic Coast Conference and we're on pace right now to be in the 80s the other end and the chance blocking the try by Levy. Sean May really working hard to try and get the ball. There's a lot of banging going on between May and Lee. And a lot of bodies who really didn't have the, nobody on the perimeter had a clean look for a passing lane. And then Scott throws it away. Paul gives it up to Downey. Paul got it right back. Draws a contact and banks it in. Just took it right to Sean May, and we touched on it in the open. That Chris Paul leading the NCAA in steals at four per game. Picks up one here, and then a nice two-man break between him and Downey. Back and forth inside. And boy, if you can go at the big man and draw the foul like that, uh, a double plus. Well, points now in the game for Chris Paul. That's his season average. So he had a slow start to this one, and he has come on strong. Well, I think he's going to discover that he can, he's going to be able to find his offense when he wants it, Tom. And he, you know, he, he knows his primary deal is to set other people up, but uh, he's, he's going to be able to score, too. Jawan Williams able to shake free of Levy and lays it in. Carolina back on top by a point. A couple of opportunities now where Wake Forest post defenders have gone for the steal, come up dry. They've gotten burned for Jawan Williams, an easy lay-in. Levy passed up the three, down he won't pass it up and knocks it in. First basket in the second half for Teron Downey after having 10 in the first half. What like terrific spacing and ball movement on that play. Rebound to May. How oh, is this a ball game? And you know what? The best thing about it is completely played. Not a lot of fouls, just good fundamental basketball. ACC basketball down into the rack and lays it in. Uh, that's, that's the scouting report. You got to keep Teron Downey from getting to his left hand, and that's he's going to be so much better going into the lane. The chance gave it up. What a catch by Sean May! Wow. Yeah, some of the best hands that I've seen in college. Ball races to the other end to lay it in. A track meet is broken out here in Chapel Hill. Got the short spikes on. Lake by two, five and a half to go. For all the build-up time, this game is better. You're not lying. Williams pulls the trigger. He's strong and felt over the back of the ground. That good call, and I like the fact that Downey just kept making up the room between him and Felt, and he kept him on his back.
Uh, Chris Paul is just getting right down the lane again. Nobody identifying. Uh, you have got to find out where number three is with the basketball and somehow stop him. Freshman Chris Paul playing in his first ACC game. Bob it into Bissell and the pass a little too far out in front. Pretty good idea right there by Levy. Yeah, but just uh, they've had a couple of lobs now in the last two or three minutes that have not been uh, well executed or, or caught, and that was a that was a tough try to come up with. 13 turnover of the game for Wake. Carolina's turned it over 12 times. Manuel forced it up there, but got it in. High game. 10 off the bench for the junior out of West Palm Beach, Florida. He has been a huge factor in all facets of the game. He's got on the glass, made some steals, defended, scored a double figure. Ball went right by Raymond Felton, and then Felton tried to catch him and reached in. That's his third foul. That'll be the team six. Right now, the top two North Carolina scorers on the bench. Yenay and Jawad Williams. Stepping up. Got a guy to find guys who will step up for you like this guy right here. Well, he has been mighty impressive today. Very little playing time this season for Kyle Visser with a seven-foot freshman. As eight points today. It's so important as a freshman time to have a game like this to draw on now. Now he's got a game tape that he can watch and he can build on it and gain some confidence from it. Rolander, the freshman, and the teammate of Ray Sean Terry, who has not played today, has come back off. Felton in the basket and go to the line. Watching two of the top point guards in America go toe-to-toe -to -toe today. One a freshman, the other a sophomore. And Raymond Felton, just a little mix-up there defensively, and we talked about his strength going at Will along the baseline. Felton at 11 in the first half. That's his first basket in the second half, and Justin Gray. Now goes to the bench for Wake with four fouls. You know, sometimes these these battles are born out of get, get personal between players, but this is just this is just two point guards who are taking their team to leading and want to win a ball game. And Felton has given North Carolina a one point lead. 407 to go at the mean goal. There, but Strickland to follow, tipped in by Visser, who's reached double digits. Boy, a tough shot, but it caught enough of the rim to just die in front. And uh, boy, Strickland has been, done a nice job anticipating the shot, getting position on the weak side. 11th change, the 10th here in the second half. Felton off the top of the backboard. Manuel had it. Look at May. Look at all the bodies to the floor. And now Strickland with Jawad Williams to beat you off. Oh, they said he was bumped by Williams. Brown can't believe it, and neither can Jawad Williams. Bodies have been on the deck all throughout this game, and Chris Paul, the freshman, comes up. Right now, Trent Strickland, he's trying to think, do I take this all the way? He's trying to see if there's anybody behind him. I think he got away with a little bit of a walk right there, John. It looked like Jawad Williams had his hands up in the air. Well, now both teams in a one-and-one -one situation. That's the seventh foul of the half for North Carolina. Lake with eight. So still a ways away from a double ball. But three throws may determine this one. Strickland. And if that's the case, Tom Wake Forest, the last the first one out, Wake Forest, the better free throw shooting, number two in the ACC at 73%. Short on the second try, and Felton the rebound, and then Strickland's silly 
So now we'll walk to the other end. Ross Felton will go to the free throw line in a one and one. You know, and you have to wonder that, and, and I think this is, uh, I don't agree with the media, and it, you know, it caused a lot of hype. And you come out with the preseason predictions. You know, these kids read all this stuff. I think Raymond Felton really, you know, you know, wonder how he dealt with being chosen the preseason player of the year. He's, you know, it's bad enough he's compared to Phil Ford at every turn. And, uh, you know, I, yeah, and, I, and I think that, you know, it may have put a lot of pressure on him and, uh, you know, now maybe starting to break out of it. But this this challenge with Chris Ball certainly brought out the best in Raymond Felton. Well, Felton last year became the first Carolina freshman ever to score 400 or more points and hand out 200 or more assists in the same season. Apparently Downey must have suffered some kind of cut. Greg Collins, the trainer, will take a look at it. I don't know if he's got, yeah, if he's got a cut or a little blood on his uniform. Felton back to the line with a chance to tie it up. He sit on two of two from the strike. 18 of 22 on the year. We are in December. The ACC opener here at Chapel Hill. 82 apiece. You're watching a special presentation of ACC Sunday Night Hoops presented by Staples. 3.06 to go. Don't you dare go anywhere. They got seven because Visser is two. Wow. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Visser's in double figures. Seven guys in double figures. Yeah. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We had ten at halftime. Or eight at halftime. Ten lead changes were knotted at 82 with 306 to go. Eric Williams came in averaging 17 points and six rebounds per game. We documented the change in his body during the offseason. And over the last 15 months in general, losing 50 pounds. But what a turnaround. All the other numbers. A higher standard brought to you by Bank of America. Hey, you know, my, my five-year-old son Noah weighs about 50 pounds. I know it's like carrying him around. You know, you lose that. It makes your body feel better. You know, you can, you can just you can, you can see it out on the floor. He's, he's in much better shape. He's moving in transition better as well, Tom. Huh? Under three minutes to go. And the sellout crowd at the Smith Center on the campus of the University of North Carolina. Roy Williams, first game in ACC play in his first season as a head coach. Shot clock at five. Strickland has to let it go. What a big shot by Strickland. That's a three. Now wow, Strickland, three of six from the three-point line coming into this game. But uh, again, we talk about the building of confidence and uh, how it has grown throughout this game. Seven players for Wake Forest now in double figures. McCann. 
fouled by Chris Paul. Great pass by Felton. And the Cants will go to the line to shoot a pair. That was something we were looking for early in uh, Rashad McCants being guarded by the shorter Chris Paul. Did a nice job of sealing him in the lane. And Paul almost came up with a jump ball in that situation. And right now the possession arrow is in favor of Wake Forest. Now McCants at the line, one of two today. McCants a good free throw shooter. He's now hit on 23 of 33 on the year. Downing comes back in and Strickland, who has been a critical part of this very strong road performance by Wake Forest, will go to the bench. Well, offense for defense, uh, opportunity for Skip Prosser to get that smaller unit out there. Spread the floor a little bit and open things up. McCants in a boat. And now Manuel will come on for defense. McCants will sit down. We'll see a lot of this over the final 209. Carolina has lost four consecutive games to Wake Forest. Not one Carolina player on its current roster has ever beaten the Demon Eagle. Roy Williams reminded his team of that fact yesterday in practice. Spins in the lane, tough shot, won't get it made, the basketball, and Carolina a chance for the lead. Felton, coast to coast, they'll go to the line. He is so remarkably quick with the ball. Been very aggressive in this game. Wake asleep a little bit that time. Defensively getting back, and again, you, you know, Either way, you got to find number two and you got to find number three in transition for their respective teams. Levy going up. Probably should have just timed it a little bit better, a little aggressive that time. I think he would have uh, had an opportunity to get a block in that situation. Button 404 from the line, the sophomore out of Atlanta, South Carolina. He'll have his high school jersey retired next week. Hit a boat. Tar Heels 86, Demon Deacons 85. Ball gives it up to Williams, had it rejected. Loose ball, it goes to the Tar Heels. And Skip Prosser cannot believe there was no whistle. But normally, Tom, when you make that aggressive a move inside, you feel like you're going to get rewarded, but everybody's smothering Eric Williams. Well-designed play, a little two-man game with Chris Paul. There's the look, and it almost looks like in uh, Sean May coming down from the top gets it. He's really the only shot blocker this team has. And it looked like May may have gotten away with it. Like I say, you know, normally, I mean, I thought Eric Williams did a great job. You don't want to leave anything to doubt. Go up and attack the rim, and I thought he's done a better job of that in the second half. Turn back the clock earlier in this one that brought the crowd back in it. Or Kiyosera's shot of the game. And for those of you that weren't with us, we'll give you a look at it in a moment. Rashad McCants on an alley -oop. Here's the play. Raymond felt in the great eye contact setting this up. Boy, now there was a strange play. Nobody for North Carolina went along the sideline to throw the ball in bounds. The official put the ball on the floor and started the five-second count. Carolina realized it would not get a player over there to throw it in before the five seconds expired, so they had to spend a time out. And that's uh, well within the referee's right to do that. If he feels that the second warning uh, horn has been sounded and both teams have been notified, he can, he can absolutely put that down and start the count. There you get a look at the situation. Carolina with three timeouts left, break with two. Possession arrow favors the Demon Deacons. They're 
closing in on minute to play in Chapel Hill. What a duel it's been between Raymond Felton and Chris Paul at the point. Eric Williams and Sean May underneath. Williams had great games off the bench for both teams. From Strickland, Manuel, and Bissell. May had it rejected by Williams. And the big fella going to hold on a minute. Strickland got contact, kisses it in, he'll go to the line. We talked about Strickland. He has just set a new career high. And what an improbable play. Now, first of all, the great defensive play by Eric Williams. And then getting out, I thought it was almost going to be a turnover here at the half, but it turns into a break situation. North Carolina went on the play a little bit, and then Strickland with that acrobatic shot. I'm sure Skip Prosser was saying, no, 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 great play. Strickland was 14. His prior career high was 12. And now 15. And it's safe to say that's the biggest bucket in the very young career of Trent Strickland. No, no, no question about it. And uh, he has done a, a great job on both ends of the floor and on the glass in this game. Complete game. 46.2 seconds remain. North Carolina with the basketball, trailing by two. We'll be back. Do I need my jacket on? I got that on. Wake Forest in front, under a minute to play. What a game this has been. No, no question. I really wonder, let's see if uh, North Carolina tries to get something quick hitting here for a two-for-one situation with the shot clock. Raymond Felton with the basketball. Defended by Downey. They call him for the ball. He's defended by Levy underneath. They've taken Eric Williams out of the game. Felton had a block. Last touch by Wake Forest. Roy Williams gets a timeout and a recycle and play. 16 seconds on the shot clock, but two possessions, two big blocks for Wake Forest and a, and a team that's not known to block shots. Well, the old adage is, Tom, you go for the tie at home and win on the road. Let's see what North Carolina does here, whether they just work the ball and uh, maybe try to get something inside where you get an opportunity for a three-point play. Well, Rashad McCants has been the big story here in the second half for North Carolina. He has nine points, of course. Felton has been perfect from the line and has been able to draw a lot of contact when taking the ball to the basket. I, I, I got to think the ball's going to wind up in his hands. And just because North Carolina isn't utilizing the three-point shot much this year, I, I think that's the, the play to, to get in, score, rely on your defense, and extend the game. 25 seconds remain. Felton, wide open. What a pass to Jawan Williams. Oh, and a huge defensive lapse that time by Wake Forest. Trent Strickland went out on the play and left Jawan Williams wide open. And Felton didn't miss him. Yeah, he's, he, he ain't going to miss much. And, uh, the, you know, there was, there was no way. Uh, that, that was just uh, it's too bad. It's, He's so trying to make the hustle play. You don't see it in that particular replay, but Jawad Williams was wide open. Here's the look. 
Strickland just got caught out of position. Juan Williams, a heady play, ducking right into the basket. Our 13th tie of the game, 20.9 seconds remain. All right, now let's put the shoe on the other foot. Wake Forest, what do they want to do with the basketball? Who do they want to get it to? Well, the two things, I mean, you're going to give it to Chris Paul because he's going to create for you, but do you wait and make sure that you get the last shot of the half or do you try to get something quick? If, if the first best available shot comes to you, do you take it? If it's me, I go, for the, I go for the last shot of the game. And Eric Williams has come back on for Wake Forest. Because I'm the, I'm the deeper team, and if you're, uh, if you're Skip Foster and you've got a bunch you can rely on, I think that's the five minutes of plays to me. Well, here we go. We're down to 12 seconds, tied at 88. Downey with a basketball, defended by Scott. Downey hands it off to the freshman, Paul, who lets it fly. It's short. Williams a rebound, and they're saying it hit the top of the backboard. And so North Carolina is going to get it with 2.6 seconds left. And the bench over in North Carolina was a little unsure about how many timeouts they had left. They, got, they wanted to get the attention of the official score to make sure they had a final timeout. Mike, you've been around basketball a long time. 2.6 is a lot longer than it looks. Yeah, and it, you know, it, it, obviously the college game, to get it up full court takes a little time, but you can go over a long pass. The key thing in this situation, Tom, is to not hurry what you're trying to do. Players sometimes think that 2.6 is not a lot of time. It's an eternity. There's a lot that can happen. Look for the long pass. It was spread out to the side. Uh, you know, there are all kinds of opportunities to score in this situation. Well, if you're a betting man, and I know you're not.